Hey everybody, welcome to week five of the Sand Hill Sling Sew Along. So last week we technically finished, but this week I promised I'd show you the alternate construction method for the sling itself. Um, in last week's video, I showed you the insides of the sling, how I have it, and um, just wanna go over that. So this is a uh, drop-in lining method. There is no bound seam, there's no, um, a hole for turning or anything. It's a really nice clean finish. I like it for the sand hill because the sand hill has this rounded corners. It's a smaller size. Um, that's why I picked that for the sand hill. Um, I do have another pattern, um, my making backpack. And this is a little bit different style of a bag. I've got the sample here and I thought I'd show you that before we get started on how to do the bound seams. But um, the backpack is constructed with a gusset just like the sandhill sling but um, just the order of steps are a little bit different for the gusset and then you bind the seams and it's interchangeable so you can use this method for the sling you could use the slings drop-in method for the backpack so if you find yourself preferring one over the other um, then you can interchange those and this is what the bound seam looks like so I chose the bound seam method for the making backpack because it is a larger bag, it's a backpack size, and um, it just has straight corners. There's nothing, straight lines, you can use straight grain binding on this, whereas the sand hill, you'll have to use uh, binding that's cut on the bias. That would just be one thing to consider as well. All right, so today I'm gonna show you how to do the steps for the sand hill pieces using the making backpacks method and we'll finish up with the binding. We're going to start with the same pieces that we would have normally cut for the sand hill using the other construction method, but when you do the bound method, it's the same sizes. You don't have to cut anything different. You will just have to have the binding at the end. That would be the only additional piece that you would need. Um, but we'll get started on how this all comes together. The zipper, uh, we'll start with that piece, set your bottom gusset pieces aside. And for this video, I did interface what is my lining, just so you could see, because this is a solid, um, this is the wrong side, and I just didn't want you to get confused. Um, if you are um, for sure wanting to do this method, you can follow along here in the video. I'm gonna try and explain it well enough where you wouldn't have to reference any written instructions. But if you'd like, the Making Backpack does have the full instructions and diagrams for that. But, so we'll start here and we're going to do it very similarly if you've sewn a zippered pouch before. So I'm gonna leave my top gusset piece from the exterior right side up. I'm gonna place my zipper right side down. Again, I'm gonna keep those zipper pulls off to the side like we did in the other method. And this time I'm going to place my lining piece right side down directly on top here. And then I'm gonna clip along this edge and then we're going to sew. And then we'll sew with a 3 8 inch seam allowance right along that edge. Okay, now we're at the pressing board and I'm going to position those two top gusset pieces, wrong sides together, and then we'll press really well along the edge of the zipper here. And once those are pressed, then we're going to take it over to the machine and top stitch right along that edge. Now we have that fully attached and top stitched through both of those layers. We're gonna repeat the same process, attaching the top gusset pieces to the remaining side of the zipper tape. So it'll be top gusset exterior right side up, Zipper right side down on top. Just make sure those edges are aligned on the sides here. Um, 
there and then the lining piece right side down on top and then we're going to clip and then sew. All right, we've got it sewn and then we'll do the same thing. Press the two top gusset pieces wrong sides together. And then we'll top stitch. So the top gusset is all complete. We're attached to the zipper and I'm gonna move the zipper pulls to the center. And now we're gonna start, we'll need those bottom gusset pieces. So I'm going to do the exterior bottom gusset and then I'm going to place the top gusset, the exterior fabric right sides together with the bottom exterior. And then we will lay the lining bottom gusset right side down on top. It's kind of the same method as um, what we did along the zipper, just that sandwich method and then I'm going to take it and sew it with a half inch seam allowance here. Now I'm going to trim off that excess tape here since we've sewn that seam you're not going to worry about your zipper coming off your zipper pull and you might be thinking this looks a little weird I'm not sure if it's going to work but this is what we're going to do we'll take this end here from the top gusset I'm just going to stretch it over to meet the other short end right here lining it up again right sides together and then that same lining piece that's attached put it right side down on top and then we'll clip and then sew again with a half inch seam allowance and now we'll trim just like we did for the other side get rid of that and now all we have to do is turn it right side out so so right now we've got both of the ends sewn to the top gusset pieces we've got these loosey-goosey little bottom gusset pieces and we're going to position those wrong sides together the exterior and lining pieces will be wrong sides together so now it's one continuous loop these are your side seams, your zippers attached. And then I like to take it and top stitch along each end of the zipper here through all the layers and again over on this side. And then it doesn't hurt to do a basting stitch um, just a quarter inch away around the entire perimeter on both sides. So just run a basting stitch. That's just gonna secure all the layers together um, so then when you do the final assembly, it's going to go together a little bit easier. You're not going to have too many layers flopping about. That's always kind of a pain in the butt. So that's what this looks like. Okay, so that's the alternate construction method for the gusset for the Sandhill Sling. Um, you will have to place the lining and exterior main panels together. So you're going to have two sets. One will be the back of the bag and one will be the front, but you'll have uh, lining piece and an ex main exterior wrong sides together and you'll just base those together and same for the front of the bag you'll have the front bag exterior piece and then the lining piece um, those will be right sides or wrong sides together base those in place so you'll have those two pieces and then you're going to attach the gusset to the back side piece just like you did um, with the other construction method and then you'll att attach the gusset to the the front side piece um, and then the only other difference is after you're done attaching the gusset to the main panels is you're going to have these raw seams on the inside of your bag and that is what I was talking about before where you're going to want to bind it with some binding and I usually prefer a half inch double fold bias binding is what you're going to use so it's a two inch piece folded in half and then those raw edges go together and fold in half again. Um, I'll link to a video. I'm not going to go through the specific steps in this video, but I'll link to another video where you can watch how that's done. 
Um, you could also do, if you're a quilter, you can do a single fold binding, as in um, for your um, binding for a quilt. And um, I'll try and give you the measurements for, for the width of that that you'll need for the half inch seam allowance to cover that. Um, but that's the single fold. And just remember again, you're gonna wanna cut that on the bias. Otherwise you're not gonna make it around those curves at all. Um, and then you'll be really upset <laughs> at me. So, um, so that's what we have for the alternate construction method. I think that it's a fun choice if you wanna give it a try, if you're curious and wanna see how it goes. It's kind of fun to play around if you like the bound method or the drop-in lining method. I think there's advantages and disadvantages to each, but it's just kind of where you kind of have to pick your poison and decide which um, kind of final step you don't really enjoy. So we're all different do what works best for you. And I think that either way you choose, it's gonna come out really well. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed sewing your Sandhill sling. Um, I had a really great time doing the videos and following along with you guys. I love seeing what you make and I hope to finish mine really soon. I should have finished it before, but it's still waiting. <laughs> so hopefully I'll get some pictures and um, I'd love to see yours. So if you are on Instagram, you can post to the hashtag group, um, the Sandhill Sling or the hashtag group, Sandhill Sling Sew Along. And um, I'd love to see, and it's always fun to check out what other people have done too. So make sure you stop in and say hello and let them know how they did. And um, I hope to see you on the next Sew Along. Bye.